Whoa! Ah! That went wrong! Jeez! Why would you do that oh, to us? The rest of the day is going to be bloody miserable, you muppet! It soon became obvious that if Jeremy had been asked questions about Mongolia on who wants to be a millionaire, he might have got some of them right. Sheeps! Sheeps is... Oh! Do you know how they kill sheep in Mongolia? No. no. Would you like to know? Your door's come open. Yes. So they make a snick in its neck, yes? Yes. Put their hand in through the snick, grab the aorta on the heart and squeeze it till the animal dies. Apparently it makes the sheep feel quite sleepy. Sleepy? I'm not sure. If somebody made a hole in my neck and put their hand in and squeezed my heart, I'd say I'm feeling sleepy. No. no. Cows or yucky things. Did you know, Hammond, that you can make vodka from the milk of a yak? How do I milk a yak? <laughs> but one of Genghis Khan's cavalrymen could shoot an arrow through a marmot's head from 250 feet away while galloping. It's using traditional methods to get this fire going. And soon we shall have some delicious rice. How would you like it? Boiled? Yeah. There's nothing we can put with it. Hell, how's that? What, um, what manner of thing has happened? <laughs> Shit, what's gone? Incoming! <laughs> Holy moly! There was a hand grenade! There was literally a hand grenade! You set fire to the plastic housing at the top. Do you know, and this is not made up, one in every 200 people alive today can trace their ancestry back to Genghis Khan, or the seed of Genghis Khan. So how did he have time to do any warring? Well, he must have just been a skin full of sperm. To try and distract Hammond, I came up with some more of my special Mongol trivia. Back in the 13th century, Khan, Genghis, could get messages, OK, from one side of his empire to the other in four days. They could do 250 miles a day, one rider. What, relaying horses? One rider, yeah. You'd ride, galloping, flat out 25 miles. When you were a mile out from the horse station you were approaching, you sounded your horn, they had a horse ready, you leapt onto it without getting you just one from one horse to the other, and then carried on, and he could do 250 miles a day. So how many horses did he have? Across the empire, yeah. 30 million. No lakes. Well, we, we can now rule it out. We know it's not there, it must be somewhere else. Yeah, it is. Exactly. No, no, I mean, <clears throat> it is. Exactly. It's there. <laughs> and so now we know where we are in relation to it. But what is it? <laughs> it must be for something. Well, it must mean something, mustn't it? The annoying thing is, normally we'd look it up on Google and then we'd say with learned faces, we know what this is and we tell the viewer. But what we actually got to say now is, we haven't got any phone service. You have, you look it up. TP Mongolia. If you wouldn't mind looking it up, what it is, mm. and then imagine we're imparting that information to you in a very learned fashion. I'll do it. You James, that's fascinating. In, there you go. Yeah, that's Thank amazing, you for right? telling me all about this thing. Ooh. What? Oh, look at this. That looks like oh, bone and string. Oh, that's a proper piece of kit. I know. That's a Mongolian bow. Ooh. Is it finders keepers or can I have it? Finders keepers. No, I'll just check it. What is all what's happening above me here? Look, is it above you? Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh James, I'm afraid that he's has wet himself. <laughs> <laughs> What we'd stumbled on here was a huge geological scar that seemingly ran on forever. I read about this in a book, actually, before I came out here. There used to be a lake as big as that one over there, the one we camped by last night here. And then, in 1905, there was an earthquake, a truly cataclysmic earthquake. The lake was consumed, it simply disappeared, and a trout 400 kilometres long was formed in the earth. But luckily, this enormous earthquake happened in Mongolia, so the death toll was 15. And the other thing is, Genghis Khan created in just 20 years the biggest empire the world has ever seen. Why? It's not like he was cramped here. Oh. 
I don't really want to go to a town. Oh, oh, no. me, said the cameraman. We really are good at wildlife photography, aren't we? Oh, me. 